So our Father, our Father in heaven, Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, we place in your hands this evening as we come together to learn your word. We thank you, Lord, for opening our hearts to your word. Lord, each time when we read the word, Lord, we understand uh, we understand it differently in the context which is required for us. And not just that, but in the context that you wanted, wanted to tell us, Lord. But your word has been preached for the last 2,000 years, but it's still it is fresh and new each time when, you hear, when we hear this. As your word says in Lamentations, the la love of God is new every morning. The mercy of God is new every morning. Yes, Lord, your word is new every day for us. And that is what is keeping us going. And today as we listen, Lord, this new understanding, new wisdom, everything that you are giving us today is something new we will receive in our spirit. And we take it into our hearts and we also give us also the grace to share it with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, uh, good evening, everyone. And, uh, good evening. So, friends, uh, before we start, I had uh, shared with uh, all of you who are in part of my mailing list uh, the, uh, the notes that we made in the meeting. Uh, in yesterday's uh, notes. Julius was kind enough to put down the notes together in a slide. He also highlighted the, uh, the biblical uh, passages that we need to read because this is a study which is going to really help us to understand, discover where we are. And this will help us to come prepared. As, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, this is something which we need to do a little bit of a homework where we can come prepared so that we will be able to understand it well. So in case if you are not a part of my mailing list, WhatsApp mailing list, please uh, send me a message, 96866861391 is my number. I'm just putting it on the chat for all of you. Uh, you can just uh, send me a message and uh, I will add you to the list so that I can communicate with you all uh, various aspects of our Bible study. Right, so that's it uh, from my side. Over to you, Julius. Yeah, now, uh, yeah, thank you, Jos. Uh, I will be sending out uh, a summary for the day with a little bit of uh, reading, if you could do. It will always help you, and I will always start with a little recap of the previous day. Yeah. Now, one of the things I think we will uh, definitely do today is uh, read Numbers chapter 13, not fully, uh, Jos, would you help us in reading Numbers chapter 13, verse 1 to 7? Yeah. yeah. The Lord said to Moses, send, send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I, gave, which I give to the people of Israel. For each tribe of their fathers shall you send a man, every one, of, every one a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord, all of them men who were heads of the people of Israel. And these were their names, from the tribe of Reuben, Shamau, the son of Zakur, from the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, the son of Hori, from the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephune, from the tribe of Issachar, Igel, the son of Joseph, from the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea, son of Nun. Okay. Move fast to, uh, from there, we will move to 17 onwards, verse 17 onwards. Moses then sent spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go up to Negev yonder and go up to the hill country and see what the land is and whether the people dwell in it are strong or weak, whether they, they are few or many. And whether the land that they dwell is in good or bad, whether the cities that they dwell are in camps or strongholds, and whether the land is rich or poor, or whether it, there is wood in it or not, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. I'll... Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Should I continue? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. You continue. Okay. 
So they went up to Negev and came to Hebron, Ahiman, Seshai, and Talmai, the descendants of Anak, were there. And they came to the valley of Eskol and cut down from there a branch with a single cluster of grapes, and they carried it on a pole between two of them. And they brought also some pomegranates and figs. Mm. That place was called the Valley of Eskol because the cluster, because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down from there. At the end of 40 days, they returned from spying out the land. Yeah. Okay. Now we will quickly go uh, up to uh, verse uh, from 27. And they told him, we came to the land to which you sent us. It flows like it flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Yet the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of Negev, Negev the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the hill country, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the Jordan. But Caleb quiet, quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. Then the, ma then the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. So they brought to people Israel an evil report of the land, which they had spied out, saying the land through which we have gone to spite out is a land that devours its inhabitants and all the people we saw in it are men of great stature. And the last verse. And there we saw Nephilim and we seemed to ourselves like grasshoppers and so we seemed to them. Okay. So this is the context we were discussing yesterday that, uh, that you know, the people of Israel are about to enter into the promised land. They have not yet spent their 40 years in the desert. There was no need for them to spend 40 years in the desert. The same point applies to us today. The blessings of God are waiting for us to be crossed over. There is no need for us to tarry and toil in the way we have understood life generally in a certain sense. All right? Yes. So we are looking at what can cause the delay in the goodness that God has kept for us. What can cause the delay? The delay is not a few thousand or a lakh or a few crore of rupees. Mm. The delay is the delay of a lifetime. Mm. And is that worth it? Mm. The question goes for all of us, is it, is, it going to, is it worth this kind of a delay? Can we kind of risk it like this? Right. Yeah. So we will quickly now. So we got the context. They are crossing over into the promised land. They have sent out the spies. Now, when Joseph read in the beginning, he, God is calling out leaders from each tribe. Now, right. the reason leaders, you know, now, Joseph is raising this happy families group. Mm. Not that Joseph is the leader and these happy families are following. Joseph is raising everyone up to be a leader. Please understand. Mm. Okay. How many of us will stand in that gap and, and fit into that shoes? By making a choice, that's all. You know, we don't have to, you know, be extra spiritual. This brother Julius is telling, read the Bible. So I will try by the Bible. No, no, no. It's not about that. Just telling the Lord, Lord, I am available. Mm -hmm. That itself qualifies you because we are not qualified by our qualifications. We are qualified by his grace. Mm -hmm. But the point is, the Lord is seeking. Is there anybody whom I can send? Mm. So this reminds me, Julius, about uh, the Acts of the Apostles uh, when they started the, the Christianity as, I mean, the first group, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. The cost. When there was uh, confusion where, uh, uh, where uh, you know, the widows of uh, one community was uh, ign neglected. ignored, were neglected. Yeah. Mm. They selected uh, seven people mm. to, and their primary responsibility was to divide uh, the food and things. Fascinating. Fascinating. Uh. <laughs> and they, I'm sure that they did not have any experience of serving food before. Uh, that was not a qualification. But then they rose up to the rose up to the leadership. Yes. From that leadership, from that leadership uh. came the first martyr. Stephen. Yeah. From yeah. that leadership came the first martyr. Yeah. So that is a very clear, uh, clear indication of what you're saying. 
It is not just about your qualification. It is not just about uh, you know, how much you know about it. It is about that willingness, that attitude that you display. Yeah. At the time when, uh, when uh, there is a need, there is a call mm. uh, to go step in and say that I am available. And from there, the Lord lifts you up. Yeah. Amen. Use you and take you to the next level, which you can't even imagine. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I'm glad you brought that fantastic point, uh, Joe. See what happens. In the, when I read about uh, Stephen, I got a little upset. Um, and I read the Stephen's uh, speech, you know, he gives to the Sanhedrin amazing speech. Um, huh? And out of the seven people, they've chosen uh, Stephen as a leader. Yeah. But to ration the rice and, the, you know, to give out the f food items so that one group will not be denied. There'll be equity and justice, you know, for that. They, so I got upset. I'm thinking, you know, man of such a theological astuteness, mm -hmm. Stephen, uh, speaking to the Sanhedrin, that means he's pitching the ball to them straight. Uh, so that kind of a man they have taken and put in charge of rationing. So I was just thinking, Lord, what, Lord, that means you will take us and make us do all this rice work and all that. Uh, I'm asking the Lord in my prayer, you know. Yeah. But the Lord is asking, are you willing to serve? Yeah. You see, the leadership is about service. That is what the Lord came to do. He came to serve. Correct. See, for, for me, I had to take several jolts in my leadership head to come down. I couldn't come down. To come down. Hmm. Say, Lord, oh my goodness. Now you are tying the waist, uh, towel around your waist and you are washing the feet. Oh my goodness. Now only I understand. You see? So, the positions are open. Right. Look up to the typical leadership, we will find all the positions closed. Mm -hmm. If you look up to the area of service, mm -hmm. service, serving people, you will find positions open. The Lord has enough opportunities. Right. In fact, uh, there is a beautiful story. You would have heard about the story of Samuel Bringle and William Booth. You know uh, about the story? Uh, William Booth and Samuel Bringle, yes, but would you please repeat it? Okay, so William Booth apparently is the founder of this uh, Army, you know, which is a mighty, uh, you know, organization around the world who uh, who actually is in a very systematic way of evangelizing. They have their own set of things. Mm. Uh, we go to Mavi, you know, they have, they, they have this, uh, you know, thrift store uh, there. Yeah. And you go and buy things which uh. people don't want to use it. But yeah. anyway, William Booth apparently uh, comes from a very, uh, you know, diplomatic background with a military background. And he has got a very systematic way of approaching things. Mm. And Samuel Brinkle was one of the very, very leading, you know, very leading uh, preacher during that time from an, another church in um, in uh, in uh, another. Mm. Okay, and Samuel Brinkle, once he was praying, was inspired by God to go and meet William Booth, mm. and he, he go uh, travel months together to reach uh, William Booth's place in England. Hmm. said, I wanted to join the Salvation Army. And Samuel Bringle was supposed to be a very, very anointed man of God who could become a, uh, you know, become a bishop in, in his church. But uh, William Booth uh, uh, categorically denied. Hmm. He said, I cannot take you. I hmm. don't have any vacancy in my ministry. I, can't, I cannot take you. Okay. But uh, this, he was very convinced. Samuel Bringle was very convinced the fact Mm. God has called him, wanted him to join William Booth. Mm. Finally, uh, after all denial, Samuel, uh, uh, Samuel Brinkle asked William Booth, give me some job that mm. I could be a part of your ministry. Then William Booth said, there is one vacancy here and the role is that you have to clean the shoes of the people who are going out for the missions? You know, when morning that when morning when people go, evening they come back. You clean up the shoes. Mm. Are you willing to do it? Mm. And his inspiration was so strong, he took up that job. He took the job mm. of cleaning the shoes of the people for a part of William Booth's ministry, mm. and he continued to do that for weeks, months together. And it came to a it came to a time when uh, every every year they have this uh, annual uh, meet of uh, Salvation Army, when people mm. from, you know all over the world come together, mm. and great congregation, great speakers come and preach. 
uh, the word of God. And it's a mighty revival. It was uh, during that time. It was a couple of centuries back. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and on the last day where the maximum number of people come, it's, it's like a, you know, big yeah. event, right, for them. Yeah. And the speaker who was supposed to come did mm. not come. Okay. So, William Booth was uh, very, very, uh, you know, uh, upset. Uh, um, so, uh, he, uh, he, he didn't, uh, he was praying. And in the prayer, he felt the Lord is telling that uh, the speaker is in his inside in, in in your house itself you know yeah. i have chosen a speaker inside the house mm. he william Booth thought it was he god wanted him to go and speak mm. and he kept uh, discerning more he and as he was discerning he heard the voice very clearly from the lord i wanted samuel bringle to go up to the stage it was absolutely impossible for william booth to accept a man who is wiping the shoes to go up on the stage and address 15,000 people who are coming that evening. But because God's inspiration was so strong, he didn't want to you know, play with that. He went and requested Samuel Brinkle, can you please get ready and go and preach that evening? And he was not willing even to go next to him because he could not even imagine Samuel Brinkle going and preaching. With all humility, Samuel Bringle accepted this invitation. He had to dress him up. William Booth had to dress him up because he was not, he didn't have even proper dress. His mm. job was only to clean the shoes. Yeah. And uh, he goes into the stage. Mm. And William Booth uh, was so upset when was in the one corner of the stage without even going to the mic to introduce the speaker. Samuel Bringle got into the mic and said and told the told the audience let us pray he closed his eyes and prayed 15 minutes later when he opened his eyes not a single person was sitting on the stage mm -hmm. the congregation was on the floor and weeping and crying for repentance Alleluia. of god including samuel bringle it's including william booth he crawled onto the stage and fell at the feet of Samuel Bringle and asked for mercy. Mm. So from this story, what uh, I understand is that when God calls us, he might not call it the way we like to be called. He will call the way he feels more apt for you and me to be glorified in his right time to you know, to, to share his glory to others. So this yeah. is a very, uh, you know, beautiful story, which uh, it is fresh in my mind. And, and uh, you know, I just wanted to share with all of you. Praise God. Thank you for that, uh, Jose. That was, uh, I will remember this because uh, my neighbor out here, uh, outside of our road, that side in Kunur, is the Salvation Army people. They're good friends. Okay. okay. So they have a soap, uh, soup, salvation so they pick up people from the street mm. give them a nice wash you know soak them mm. then they give them soup something to eat and then they'll give them the gospel the three s's soap soup and salvation that's an amazing formula that they follow with the poor people and uh, yeah so i thank you for giving me this episode william brinkle and uh, uh, william booth and uh, samuel brinkle i will remember that so uh, this is an amazing call that God gives. And as I was asking the Lord, Lord, see, rationing out the rice for uh, this man, whatever, uh, our first martyr, Stephen, you know, but the Lord is telling, he will resolve the conflicts happening at that point. Right. You see, the position is humble, but the delivery is great. Right. Delivery is to resolve the conflict happening between the Greek Jews and the Orthodox Jews. Mm. The women of these two communities are getting ignored. The Greek Jews, the Orthodox Jews women are getting food because they are directly connected with the Jews. The Greek Jews, uh, women from the Greek, uh, they're not, they're being ignored. So he is going to be the resolver of conflicts. Now see, even in a humble position, God is doing a great delivery through us that there will be equity, justice coming from a man who was very well versed in the word. Stephen was very well versed in the word. Mm. So you see, it's not that God will not put our talents to work. He'll put our talents to work, but the calling is very humble. The mm. delivery is very great. Mm. 
So, you know, we have to rise up to this calling and that is the calling uh, that is needed in the gospel today. And we will quickly go to the next point. What is it we stand to lose? We look at the chips that are, if we, if we lose it, we, uh, the chips will be down against us. And what is the risk we take? Numbers chapter 14 we are going, okay? We'll go to Numbers chapter 14. Now, in Numbers chapter 14, we are going to jump a few verses, okay? Uh, so, Numbers chapter 14, verses 1 to 4, you read. Then all the congregation raised a loud cry and the people wept that night. Hmm. And all the people of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron. Hmm. The congregation said to them, hmm. would, they, would that we had died in the land of Egypt or would that we had died in this, in this wilderness? Uh, Why does the God, Lord bring us, to in, bring us into this land to fall by the sword? Our, wi our wives and our little ones will become a prey. Mm. Would, it be, would it not be better for us to go back to Egypt? Mm. And they said to one another, let us choose a captain and go back to Egypt. Yeah, this is up to verse 4. Okay. Mm. Now, the Lord wants to destroy these people because they want to go back to Egypt. Okay. We are, now we are understanding the, going to understand the importance of Egypt. Okay. Why this Egypt has such a hold on these people? Now, translate it to our context today. There is something that is holding us in our lives so powerfully. Every time we face fear or every time we face a challenge or every time we face failure, we want to go back. You know, that attitude is there in us. That kind of an attitude has to be done away with once and for all. We have to be delivered from it. Now, I'm not talking about deliverance ministry, though there will be deliverance happening at every level. Okay, we're coming to that quickly. But before that, let's complete our scriptural reading for today. Okay, now... We are going to verse uh, 26. Numbers chapter 14, verse 26 onwards. Please read, uh, brother. And the Lord said to, Mo said to Moses and to Aaron, hmm. How long shall this wicked congregation murmur against me? Hmm. I have heard the murmurings of the people of Israel, which they murmur against me. Hmm. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, what you have said in my hearing, I will do to you. Hmm. Your dead bodies shall fall in this wilderness and of all your number. Hmm. Upward from 20 years old and upward and who have murmured against me. Hmm. Not one shall come into the land where I swore that I would make you dwell except Caleb son of Je Jephune and Josh Joshua the son of Nun. Hmm. But your little ones who would say would become a prey I will bring in and they shall know that they shall know the land which you have despised. Hmm. But as for you, your dead body shall fall in this wilderness. Yeah. Yeah, please, uh, please continue up to verse 30, uh, four, verse 34. As your ch and your children shall be shepherds in, shepherds in the wilderness 40 years and shall suffer for your faithlessness. Hmm. And the last of your dead bodies lies in the wilderness. Hmm. According to the number of the days in which you spied out the land, 40 days for every day a year. You mm. shall bear your iniquity 40 years and you shall know my displeasure. Amen. So now we are establishing what we discussed yesterday through scripture that for every year of every day they spend in the promised land, God is telling, whatever I heard you people murmur against me, all the negativity you people murmured, whatever you mouthed, negativity, fear, that I'm going to do to you, he says. Mm. You know, we ought to be very careful with our words whether we're speaking it to others, speaking to ourselves or to the Lord. That is why when we want to do a negative evaluation about ourselves, okay, about ourselves, the Lord has to be present. Mm. He is the only one who can bring good out of evil. Mm. See, the year is coming to an end, okay? 30, we are in the December. One of these days, uh, towards the end of the year, after Christmas, I will be sitting down with my yearbook with the Lord and saying, these are the years, days in which, you know, I have failed you, Lord. It's, it's going to be a negative evaluation. Mm. I'll be joyful for the things that I received from the Lord. But there will be times, of, there are times of failure. There are times of lapses. There, uh, there are times of not seeking the Lord on certain things. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, learning from that. And so one of the things we need to do is when we are speaking to the Lord, uh, 
Mm. We speak just as we know it is. There is no need to polish the you know, verses like, you know, Lord, you know, I sinned, you know, I committed adultery, you know, that advertisement I was with. You know, you just speak it like that. Mm. Okay, I'm uh, remembering one incident that happened to me. Now, I was going to preach in uh, St. Anthony's Friary, okay? And I have to travel from Cooktown, where I used to live. And I have to take that straight road from Tom's Bakery and come to St. Anthony's Friary. Now, on the way, there are so many traffic junctions. Now, in one traffic junction near the cemetery, there were, I, 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 was, I was in my car driving. Next to me was my wife. Behind me are my two children, okay? Mm -hmm. My daughter and my son. We are in the traffic junction. There are two huge billboards, mm. right and on my left, two huge billboards having an advertisement for lingerie. Mm. You know, both have released new brands and they are competing with each other. Mm. Huge billboards. You cannot look anywhere else. Even if you want to look at the traffic light, you are going to look at them. Uh. See, that's, that's the attack on your senses. Right. Okay. Now, I am thinking, Lord, where to look now? Um, and uh, a, it is like a 115 second signal mm. you're going to sit. I'm looking at my wife. She's looking away. I'm looking at my children. They are looking away. That means we are embarrassed. We don't, we can't look straight, you see. Mm. That is the situation of the day. We can't look straight. And now I'm thinking, Lord, I, I'm going to be preaching. Mm. <laughs> I must honestly admit to you, these images will be playing in my mind. Mm. And I got another 10 minutes to reach from that cemetery to the, uh, to, to the uh, friary, another 10, 15 minutes. Mm. Lord, what is going to be the state of my mind? Mm. I'm asking the Lord that. Mm. And once the tra traffic cleared, I started to uh, clear that and I started to leave and I'm asking the Lord, Lord, cleanse my mind. Some Buddhism story and all came in my mind. You know, those philosophical stories we remember, you know, you don't carry these things in your mind. You are the one who carrying the things are carrying you, you know, all that kind of philosophy. But nothing is uh, producing any result. By the time I reached Forum Mall, I said, Lord, let's be clear on this. By the time you put me on that pulpit, uh, I need to be cleansed. How are you going to clean my mind? Mm. Immediately, you know, the Lord gave me a vision in Forum Mall. At a traffic junction, Forum Mall, you can have a vision. The Lord is wonderful. <laughs> he gave me a vision of the cross, of a battered body of Christ and the nakedness of Christ bleeding. I said, Lord, this, Lord, thank you. By your stripes, I'm cleansed. I am healed. You know, what is happening in those two hoardings eh, is the attack on your spirit. Mm. It's an attack on your imagination. This, see, at an, an unprecedented time. Mm. And now the Lord gives you the vision of his son on the cross. Mm. He is hanging like meat. Mm. Just exposed for all the world to see and bleeding. Mm. And I shuddered in my seat and I thanked the Lord. Tears were running down my eyes. My ask, wife asked me what it is. I said, Lord, in the same tears, I am asking you one prayer, Lord. Ban all these hoardings, Lord. Why are they putting up such huge hoardings? Ban them all. I don't know. Somebody told me even today the hoardings are banned. Okay. I don't know if it is an answer to my prayer, but I thank the Lord because one year later, the ban came into force, it seems. You know, BBMP stopped all these. But by the time I went up to the pulpit, the Lord's vision cleansed my mind. Now, whenever I see anything like that, the same vision plays into my mind. I'm not having another vision, but the vision that the Lord gave me comes into my mind. Right. So what I'm willing to say... So, the Lord, then, so this is very important. This is very important because today... Mm. And, and the two days back, Sharu and I, we were discussing the biggest challenge, which uh, especially people in the, you know, people who are maybe physically not so violent, physically mm. who are, uh, you know, mm. calm and composed. Yeah. The struggle that which people go through are the struggle in the mind. Amen. Mind. Yeah. You know? So right. this is a very beautiful solution, I mean, beautiful answer uh, to that particular struggle because the cleansing of the mind. So, the, so can you explain that what you know when you say vision? 
Hmm. Just explain uh, how did it happen to you? I was asking Lord, how does one get out of this? Suddenly, something about uh, a particular saint. I think it is Thomas Aquinas. You know, he wanted to be a, a saint and he wanted to serve the Lord. And his royal father caught him and put him in a in the top of a castle. You know, on the top of a castle and locked him into a room, and sent an immoral woman into his room. to make sure that his morality is defiled you know his morality what he was holding for the lord is defiled i don't know who is this and i think it is thomas aquinas okay now this uh, story flashed in my mind and i said lord see and you know what this thomas aquinas did he lit a, he broke one of the stool or something there wooden lit it on fire and told if you come near me i will burn you and myself you know i have seen like this only in hindi films where the heroine says something like that now this is uh, the, no, so that's what thomas aquinas did or the saint did you know i can be wrong on the name so so that's what he did and uh, within a few minutes like a shriek there was and this lady f- went out of the door half of her uh, you know the uh, hair all flaying maybe there was fire in the hair so she ran out saying he's a madman yeah he was mad for the lord you see so after that he had a vision of an angel coming to him and saying um, aquinas you are given a special grace from today onwards you will not be troubled in this area you know wow. so this uh, this incident came to my mind and i started to pray in the forum on lord how lucky for your saints they pray and you send an angel in this area they will not be troubled now how am i going to be uh, uh, you know stopped another 5 minutes 7 minutes i will be there lord in the pulpit how you are going to do at that point of desperation there is a image that flashed in my mind in in front of me you know there is a there is a wind screen in, i'm seeing through the wind screen in, in front of me like this it was a vision mm. of the lord crucified mm. on the cross bleeding i could look at his face and it was just bleeding bleeding everywhere you know the one of the closest to movies that came to capturing the, the the crucifixion was the passion of christ because you see he is just blood blood and blood and once i saw that and the and the lord said i am naked on the cross and i said my lord my lord you were ashamed for all the world to see today we have no shame for our own morality but that i will not worry in future lord i am going to carry this in my mind so that image was replaced by this vision mm. and not that day even today whenever i am challenged we are watching television we are going out some advertisement something or the other some bus comes in front of you you know my i i discuss all these topics with my wife you know most of the time she is there with me suddenly one huge bus will go in front of you with one hero in smiling from the back you know one big sticker huh? mm-hmm. so i am wondering why these people put the sticker and i didn't have any answer i asked my wife you I think why these people put such a big sticker no answer and you know, i am pondering many times every time a bus overtakes i ask her this question whoever is there next to me ask the question sometimes priests have been next to me i have asked them the question <laughs> uh, sometimes my friends i asked nobody answered one day my wife said see whenever that bus overtakes you you are going slow mm. then i got the answer maybe she was hinting correctly only i got the answer that means what happens we are enamored by that uh, beautiful face or something and then we continue slow down you know because we allow the bus to drive so he keeps ahead of us you know so maybe is uh, that is a that is a gimmick or a trick or something like that people will not overtake the bus but it engages our mind see calm waters run deep deep the people who are calm can also be going through these challenges mm. okay. yeah that's what, that's what that's what you know this is uh, so this is a struggle which uh, which is very uh, you know common in lot of people and they can get uh, really uh, you know uh, uh, go haywire in terms of their thought process uh, and can create a lot of turmoil in the in the in the, the families in the lives yes absolutely uh, anyway so good uh, good that you shared this uh, okay let's continue yeah so we can, we stand to lose one year Uh, of our lives if we don't understand the the concept of the egypt desert and the promised land now 
I'm asking uh, just an open question to all of us. If we have been that Israelite generation who walked through the Red Sea, uh, saw 10 plagues in Egypt, walked through the Red Sea, just before leaving Egypt, our neighbors are giving us all the silver and gold jewelry and telling, please leave, uh, wish well for us, you know. And, uh, you know, we are carrying uh, gold and silver and, you know, the plunder like that. And we are going towards the Red Sea. As we are looking back, we see the pillar of fire. Hmm? We see the pillar of fire protecting us. We have not seen such awesome things. We see all of this. We cross into the desert. And then now we grumble. Now I want to go back. Let us find a different leader. This Moses will <laughs> give us trouble. Let us find. I mean, can you believe it? We, we are such people. Hmm. What, what 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 do you think? You know what do you think plays up in our mind like that when we want to go back? Mm. And God is telling, "I have sworn with an uplifted arm to give you the promised land." God has sworn. You know I don't have to keep my word. He is going to keep His word. All I have to do is follow Him according to His word. Mm. Oh, so He said, "Land of milk and honey." Yes, the land is flowing with milk and honey, rich produce, prosperous, green, fertile, protected land. Yes. What is the catch? The catch is somebody else is in possession. Mm. And they look stronger than we are. I'm not saying they are stronger. They look stronger than we are. Going by the description that they read, they said these fellows are Nephilim, these fellows are giants, and we look like grasshopper in their own eyes. Okay? Now we are coming to what is Egypt. When God took a family of 70 plus people, Jacob and his 12 sons and his descendants, Joseph already went to Egypt and he has become prime minister and he is living in Egypt and he is uh, saving the world from a famine. Mm. Jacob and his family who missed Joseph they are also going into Egypt because Egypt is the only place where food can be found. Correct. They're going there. So we know the story. Having gone there, they meet up with Joseph. The family is reunited. There is peace among the brothers and all of that. We know that story. Hmm. Now, Joseph negotiates with Pharaoh. Doesn't have to negotiate much, but he's putting it forward in a very clever way. Hmm. And seeing to it that his people are blessed by getting the land of Goshen which is very fertile, where they can grow their livestock and all of that, right? We know up to that, okay? So there are a group of 74 people, hmm. a family, basically a family from Canaan came to Egypt and lived there. In 430 plus years, that is the book, beginning of the book of Exodus, it says in 430 plus years, these Israelites have become a numerous people. Hmm. What is so special about Israel? What do you think is special? Let's open it out for a discussion. What is special about? Only then we'll understand our speciality. Right. Hmm. What do you think? Yeah, anybody can contribute. Anybody, yeah, anybody, anybody. It's not a chat show between the Joe and... Yeah. <laughs> God was with them? God was with Israel. But why did he choose Israel? Why not choose the Arameans? Or the others? Uh, people. Be, yeah. Because of their obedience. They were Joseph's obedience, rather, I would say. Or uh, because of the covenant he had with the uh, Abraham and okay. Jacob. Okay. They were the smallest nation. They were the smallest nation. Yes. Yes. They were the smallest among nations at that time. They were still a family, 74 people. He took and put them into Egypt. Okay. Now, what God is doing, unseen to our eyes. Oh, so they were the smallest. I didn't, I didn't, uh, you know, think that way. They were, they were the smallest of all these nations that were living there, no? Because they started as a family of 74 people. By the time others are, others, all these seven tribes are living. You know, the Girgashites, the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Jebusites. These are all huge tribes living. These are 12 tribes. Israel people are 12 tribes. Hmm. But when they started, there were only 74 people. One family came and settled in Egypt. Hmm. 
Now, across 430 years, God has quietly accomplished something right under their nose, which they themselves have not seen. They have become a numerous people. Okay? They have become a numerous people. Point number one. Point number two, they don't have their freedom yet. They are living under an Egyptian king. Mm. Right? They are living under an Egyptian king. Now, what we have to understand? As long as Joseph was there, he was fending for the family. Okay. After Joseph died, the previous some pharaohs remembered what Joseph did, and some kind of diplomatic extension was given to these boys. You know, extension of visa, extension of stay, permanent residence, all these kind of things were given. But they are not citizens of that land. Mm. But they are multiplying. Mm. So today, Christians are numerous in number. Mm. We are spread across almost every nation in the world. Mm. We are not the majority. You see, we are not the majority. But God is willing to work through us. What is happening suddenly in the book of Exodus, as Exodus, from Genesis to Exodus, there is a jump. In this jump of 430 years of history is hidden. It's not there. Mm. Now, book of Exodus starts by saying, then there came a Pharaoh who did not remember the good things that Joseph did. Mm. And he suddenly took stock and said, these people have become numerous fellows. They have become numerous. If there is a war, they, will, they can easily join with the other king and defeat us. So relegate them all, keep them all in a certain zone and use them for hard labor. Yeah. Hard rules are coming upon the people of God. Are hard rules coming upon us today? It is for us to think. Next. These people are put into hard labor. And they are go everything is made tight, more and more tight for these people. No straw. Go and find your own uh, straw. Make the equal number of bricks. All that you know is part of the Ten Commandments story. We know that what these people do. They start to cry out to their God. See, whenever we, we are Christians praying, we always bow our head. If you look at the Jew, whenever he has to pray, he lifts up his head. See, it's a natural instinct. It is an instinct of relationship. You look up to somebody who is there. Now, we bow down as a, uh, as a sign of respect. Or we bow down as a sign of our piety or uh, as our standing before God. He is mighty. I don't dare to look up at his face. What? There is one priest. There is a priest. Father Trevor. Whenever he carries the blessed sacrament and comes to bless, he tells everybody, don't bow down. Look up and look up to your Lord. You know, these are the kind of transformations that we need in our rituals also. Looking up does a whole world of difference to us. Looking up to God, our verbiage changes. Our words in our mouth changes. Now, I, I'm going to tell you one practical example. You can bow down and cry and say, Lord, I feel like a worm. I feel I've been crushed. I have been denied. People have been unjust to me. My family has written me off. They have been unjust. They cut me off from the inheritance. This man has not paid me. That person has taken away my wealth. No, we can cry. Now, try to do the same thing with your eyes up, with your face looked up. Try, try to do it. You cannot do it that way. The, the, the emotionalism will go away. You know, first and foremost, that what we call self-pity will not work there. Now, you put up your head and cry like this. You try it. I tried it. Your self-pity will go away. In fact, your language starts changing. And God wants that to happen. Nice God, yeah. Beautiful. He wants it to happen. Mm -hmm. So, you, I'm not saying we should all pray like the Jews. But next time when you pray, lift up your hands. Lift up your face to the Lord. And say, Lord, I have gone through a lot. My next verb is, what are you going to do about it? You know, it gets into, automatically it gets into a conversation. Mm. But you go like this. I'm not uh, belittling people or anything. I'm just asking you to try as an experiment. And if it becomes a lifestyle, so much better for us. You know, you always lift up your countenance to the Lord. What was special about Egypt? 
Egypt became an authority in the life of the Israelites. Just one second, uh, one second. Um, yeah. You know, you wanted to ask any questions uh, in this context? Yes, actually, brother, I wanted to know uh, uh, what was uh, the reason why they had to get into that slavery? What from their part, like as a nation, what was that uh, made them to fall, stoop down or fall down from uh, recognized people to that that uh, you know that slaver slavery point? Uh -huh. Not from the change of pharaoh and not that uh, political angle, but mm. from the spiritual angle. Mm. Right from the time of Joseph up to the time of Moses, there is a gap of 430 years. What is happening is they have no revelation of this God. Okay, they have no revelation of this God. That is the spiritual angle. Now, why I am saying this, it's very important. The same kind of gap is there from the book of Malachi to the New Testament. Malachi mm -hmm. is the last book in the Old Testament. Of course, we have our Deuterocanonicals and our other uh, extra books given to us to read. But from the book of Malachi, the timeline, to the time when God speaks again, he's speaking the first time in the New Testament when God breaks his silence, because in the book of Malachi, he says, I am going to keep quiet. Amos chapter 8, verse 11, he says, I am going to stop speaking. Okay, And he starts implementing his word from the last verse of Malachi, Malachi chapter 5, verse 14 onwards, end of story. He says, I am going to come and strike the land with a curse. And that's the end of Malachi. So when you go to Luke, you see the first word God is speaking, he's looking whom to start a conversation with. So there is a gap of 430 years. In the book of Genesis also, there is a gap of 430 years. The hmm. person closest to God was Joseph. Hmm. Now our people are living in a foreign land where they have so many gods around them. Mm. Our only traditions. What mm. is the tradition? The tradition of Yahweh. Mm. Okay. So they are remembering the God of their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So mm. they have... One minute, let me complete this point. They're given into a traditionalism wherein they're remembering the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Slowly, their lives are deteriorating, okay? And they are going into harder and harder lifestyle, harder and harder livelihood. They have sunk into slavery finally. Yes, please go ahead, sister. So, brother, basically, because God was not responding to them or uh, talking to them was a reason for them to spiritually decline. Good evaluation, sister, but you have to bring out the right word. I want the word to come from you or from anybody out there. The word to come out. See, I'm, I'm giving some clues, okay? Clues are, they are okay. traditionally calling out to God. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God of our forefathers. God of our forefathers. On one side, their lifestyle is diminishing. Hmm. Their numbers are increasing. Suppression and oppression is increasing. Hmm. Slowly they are being ghettoed. See, the Jews have always been dealt with like this. Suddenly put into a ghetto, exterminated, attacked. You know, all that has been typical to them. To their So that is beginning to happen here. They are beginning to be put in a certain region. They will be working only out of that region. They will be building cities for Pharaoh and all of that is happening. Okay. Hmm. That you feel broadly as politically happening. But are they in touch with their God? Yes. In what kind of touch? They are in a traditional touch with their God. God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. What is it that God would need to speak to them earlier than that? What do you think would make God speak to them earlier? They don't call our God. They don't have a personal relationship with the God. Yes, that's it. That's it. Okay. That's it. okay. Yeah. There has to be one person at least. See, that is what set up part to Moses. Personally connected with God. Personally connected. Okay? So, life can go on in a, in a big orchestra of traditionalism. In a big drama. In, in a lot of fancy uh, settings. Life can go on. But God is waiting for one person to connect with him. So this boils down to our lives also. Unless we are in personally touch with God, we are also deteriorating like the Israel generation in, into maybe into some kind of slavery or bondages. 
though mm. we are into the ritual of going to church or doing everything as per we are supposed to do we may not be a christian rating sister we may have been stable that is also okay. not see when okay. somebody writes a book good good is the enemy of the best when somebody mm. writes a book we all buy the book and oh wow but in real life this is what is happening we all want to stabilize at some place you know I, see let, let me tell you when everything is working we don't i don't pray really too hard mm, okay. correct when mm. everything is going my way i don't really mm. pray too hard my morning sessions with the lord uh, reduce okay then what happens suddenly boxing day is coming you know uh, or there is some challenges coming then it becomes 5:30 in the morning you see 5:30 in the morning it's it's up on time whether the alarm goes or not i am waking up at 5:30 in the morning and uh, nowadays i see uh, a tendency i wake up at 4:30 also in the morning i am saying lord <laughs> you really got hold of me eh? <laughs> so what i'm saying is not about deterioration alone sister even the so called you know we all Such. settle to a life uh, we mm-hmm. all settle to hey itre mari namakku okay see this is enough bro don't make us holy joes you know that kind mm-hmm. of talk. not about that who would not want to grow your intimacy with god you say especially when he is growing it mm. in zacharia okay. in zacharia and elizabeth in the new testament both are levites but both have been keeping the word of the lord if you read luke chapter 1 and that is the three people are in the history of israel zachariah elizabeth and mary a mother these three people are seeking god's word faithfully in their life that means they have a personal intimacy with god that is why god breaks the silence of malachi to luke he breaks the silence and his angel comes when the angel comes and starts speaking he speaks the last verse what was spoken in malachi you go and see that oh. he starts where god stopped the angel starts speaking where god stopped speaking the same words is repeated one second let me just take malachi let us clarify malachi yeah. so what Malachi chapter four verses last, last chapter uh, chapter four not chapter five four verses six five and six. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes, uh, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the land with a curse. This is the end of Malachi. Now you go to Luke. and you read luke chapter 1 you will be shocked at how it how god starts speaking from the same place where he stopped it okay mm. uh, luke chapter 1 verse 11 verse 11 you read yeah no, 11 ah. and there appeared to him an angel of the lord standing on the right side of the altar of the incense and zechariah was troubled when he saw him and fear fell upon him but the angel said to him Do not be afraid Zechariah for your prayer is heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you shall call him call his name John mm. and you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth mm. for he will be great before the Lord and he shall drink no wine no strong drink and he will be filled with the holy spirit even from his mother's womb mm. and he will turn many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God Mm. he will go before him in the spirit and the and power of elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the lord a people prepared you see mm. only word not uh, repeated here or else i will come and strike the land with the curse god uh, he put down the phone receiver like this in anger you know he put it down in anger now when he is speaking it up he is telling i want to prepare a people ready for my son so zachariah elizabeth you have been denied a child now you are going to have that child mm. what a time to have that child god is waiting for people to move in his direction hana not having a child you see she is going on praying she is going through all the insults finally she yields that child to the lord that's the direction he is waiting for Mm. and then all history changes you and i every one of you in happy families here is a history maker mm. 
all callings we'll have to rise up intimacy with the lord has no alternative no alternative intimacy is secret start talking to him mm. complain about the government you complain about your children you complain about your husband you complain about your wife complain okay then also th- start thank tell all the good things you know it, it's it, it is a conversation with the lord and you will start seeing the richness of your conversation you cannot have done such a rich conversation if there was no person listening to you hmm within 4 5 weeks something will go wrong with us hmm <laughs> Yeah, the point is the good Lord is listening. And God is waiting for this to happen. See, that is why for Moses to come onto the scene, none of these Israel, Israelite people understood it. When the suffering became so great, they raised their voice to the Lord. And he says, now I have heard your cry. Because in the cry... they are longing for this intimacy lord won't you come you, you see when the churches are being persecuted across the country wherever whichever country and all that the first time i heard it was in 1991 in haryana and i heard it i said lord what is happening this is church persecution coming now we will see if god will come and save because those were all atheistic days you know you will see god will come and save second time i hear it is in 1999 again in haryana this time i become a believer i said lord they have started again first time i be little dude now lord you have to move and protect your church today it has become a every day affair mm. every day affair now the cry is going out we are organizing the marches the, the, all this is good all this is good but when the oppression is becoming so great when our cry goes up to the lord there will come a cry in each of our hearts when we will stop thinking about myself my family my car my house it, you know those thoughts will go away suddenly we see you know when kandamal happened it brought, brought tears to our eyes didn't it yes yeah but should a kandamal happen for us to bring tears every day to our eyes i'm not talking about traditional weeping i'm just telling to understand the kind of pain that people are going through for their faith mm. and just to stand before the lord and say lord when will you say enough lord you know you start that conversation your words will start flowing mm. start with that conversation looking up to the lord your words will start flowing and when your words flow you will connect easily to the lord because it's a heart your heart has opened when your heart opens he is waiting to receive you mm. you shall find me when you shall seek me with all your heart yeah 2913 yeah there my mm. so our uh, whole discussion from yesterday is does pl- life have uh, does life have a plan yes there is a plan now sister took that verse away from me yesterday 29 lakh the plan is with him uh, how will you and i unravel it can we live in two ways in totally blind faith i won't say blind faith i will say convicted faith lord you have the plan i am not worrying every day i will start my day i will go about doing my own routine you tell me if i am doing something wrong you intervene that is also beautiful that's a good starter block hmm. i started off like that and then i start saying lord sometimes you make me do things again and again so why not i talk to you before <laughs> we start so it says me little that so you know this kind of a conversation i'll tell you there is humor in the conversation jokes hmm. sisters brothers my friends you should try there is humor in the conversation there is seriousness there is pathos that he is so real and he wants to hear what you have to say okay and after speaking sit in silence sit in silence just asking lord now i want to hear from you if he hasn't spoken anything and it's getting late for your office get up and say lord it's time for my office but but i'm listening 
I'm starting the car, Lord, but I'm listening. Lord, there's a bad traffic thing up there and I'm late for work. But by the way, you haven't really got back to me, Lord. I'm listening. I'm waiting for you. You know, that very word confessing, I'm waiting for you, Lord. I want to hear from you, will stir his heart. Mm -hmm. Try it. Praise God. Yeah. Okay, so about Israel. Israel was one of the reasons Sister Lou touched it because the smallest of all the nations. Okay, now I want to just leave the blueprint with you. Tomorrow we are uh, coming back to Egypt. God wants to give everybody absolute freedom, which he has given in creation. All the nations have absolute freedom. You know, this Israel nation, according to me, is a bad luck. Poor boys. You know, God chose them. <laughs> If you watch this movie, Fiddler on the Roof, you know, there's so much of atrocities being committed against these poor Jews. You know, uh, Topol, the guy uh, who's there, he looks up and he says, Lord, why don't you choose somebody else for some time, you know? <laughs> why are you always choosing us? So what I'm trying to say, God chose Israel. It, it is not to go against them. He wants to take one nation, give them his laws and say, listen, if this nation keeps its laws, this is the goodness that I'm going to bring about to this nation. So the other nations will look at Israel being blessed and Israel being protected, Israel being honored, Israel being rewarded, Israel being given joy, peace, happiness. And then they will gravitate towards the Lord saying, we also want to follow you of our own free will. That is the whole idea. Mm. But God does not want to entice the other nations by blindly blessing Israel. Whatever you do, you as long as you're worshipping me, you will have it going right for you. No, that is not the point. God is telling, I want to give you the give a law to Israel. And when they struggle and fail in this law, I'm not going to punish them. I want them to come back to me. But these people never came back. Mm. See, today we are not called to keep the Bible perfectly. You know, I used to go to the Lord and say, Lord, what a book you have written and given, Lord. I can't keep two lines of this book for two minutes. I can't keep. what. So what kind of hell you are preparing for me? You know, this kind of conversation I used to have with the Lord. But I understood it is not that. He says, I'm not expecting you to keep the word perfectly. I'm expecting you to come back to me every time you fall. That's all I want. Amen. Amen. In fact, that is why yesterday I think I shared with you, Padre Pio had, uh, had made, uh, had gone for confession. There were times when he had confessed 12 times a day of coming, mm. uh, getting back to the Lord. Yeah. Padre Pio, 12 times a day. Padre Pio, oh my goodness. Imagine, the, you know, coming back, you know, just imagine mm. each time mm. his attitude of coming back to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So this is the reason Israel was chosen. But what is it in Egypt? Mm. Okay. We will are we are we hitting out on time? I the on time. Yeah, I think uh, we should yeah. probably <laughs> extend uh, till some more time from tomorrow onwards, I think, because uh, it's very interesting, it's very deep, interesting. Yeah. Uh, let us uh, let us leave open for questions if uh, there are any. Yeah. any. Anybody has got any questions uh, on what we have discussed so far? You will send Brother, the is there any significance of this number 430? No, not uh, uh, significance will be there, sister, in theologians and all. See, what I will suggest at this point, to the extent application is important to us to develop a relationship with God, we will, we, we will touch those points. Now, the significance is there in the number 40. Okay. Yeah. There is significance. Okay. What is the significance? The final significance is that Jesus has re redeemed our every 40. Our first 40, our second 40 and our third 40. Hmm. The question is, do we want to run all three 40s? That is our first question. So we will give in to colloquialism. We will give in to traditionalism and we'll say, who will live so long, brother? Now that word he has heard and he can say, according to your word, I will do to you. He can 
say, no? That's what we read, okay? So we have to do so much of transformation in our own mind. Our, our, so the, to the extent we need correction, we will look into these numbers, sister. There would be some significance, 430 plus years. Same 430 plus years is the gap in the New Testament also. No, it won't be exactly same, exactly day, month gap. It's a typical gap, okay? And uh, the first gap is caused by a famine because famine was there in uh, the world. They came down to Egypt and Joseph provided for them in the famine. Again, in Malachi to Luke, it is caused by a famine of God's word. He talks in Amos 8, 11, he says, a famine of my word. I will stop speaking. Your young men and women will go from coast to coast, not restaurant coast to coast. They will go from this shore to that shore, wanting to hear new words from the Lord. They will not find it and they will grow faint, he says. So it is the second famine was the famine of God's word. But God settled that famine by sending the word in flesh, Jesus okay. himself. Praise so, God. Yeah, so these are, these are some things that are there. For our application, please understand that this God, he can demonstrate anger, he can speak angry words, but his heart is a heart of love. Mm, amen. Joseph Venus, you wanted to ask something? Uh, Please, brother. Joseph Venus? Yes, brother, it was answered. Okay, great. Okay. Same 430 years I want to ask because uh, it was answered. Thank okay. you, brother. Okay. Welcome, brother. Any other questions uh, so far? Okay, so you will send me the notes today? Uh, I will send it. Every day I will send one summary so that at the end of 10 days, we're not loosey-goosey anywhere, you know, we, we, we're keeping these 10 slides with us and it will help us. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, so so we will close it now for the uh, evening. So we will, uh, tomorrow, remember, uh, friends, uh, to if you all can join uh, at 4.37, it would be great because uh, tomorrow is a day, a uh, special day for uh, the church, for happy families. Uh, so the day of Immaculate Conception, we also complete completes one year of our, uh, you know, coming together. So we will thank the Lord. It was not a celebration, but we wanted to, you know, be united and thank the Lord for the mercy that he's been showering, graces that he's been showering in our lives. So we will close it with a prayer, uh, brother. Can you please? Pray? Brother, one second. In other yeah. words, uh, happy family was conceived. <laughs> no, no, no. Happy family was conceived 10, 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Okay. Uh, this particular yeah, the eighth, eighth day, it started yeah. beginning of construction that time. Yeah, this one was yes. This particular missionaries of prayers were conceived uh, on uh, for, on eighth of uh, December. December. Yeah, December. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, let's pray. Yeah, let's pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. About to such a joy to cross ourselves with the cross of Christ, calling on your name, calling on the name of your son, calling on the very presence of your spirit, Lord. We have received Learn Lord. Lord, Lord. and your goodness, Lord, your goodness amazes us. Lord, that you would want to make us as an example like Israel. You would want to honor us. You would want to glorify us, Lord. A plan for even for our glory you have. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we ask you, Abba, that today, Lord, as we rest and we go to bed and we square off this day, Lord, we would draw closer to you. We would be able to speak to you with our eyes, our heads lifted up. And Lord, we will discard our self-pity in the name of Jesus. And we will speak to you just the way we feel. And we will thank you for all that you have done. And we will reveal to you and we will just share and lay upon you, Lord, all that we are going through, which are not changing, breakthroughs that we need, Lord, the transformations that we are hoping for in our situations, everything we will just bring it to you, Abba. And we want you, Abba, to move into our lives, just as you sent a deliverer, Moses. Abba, you have sent Christ into our lives. Today, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Abba, that you would move into our lives. In, in signs, wonders, and miracles, in dreams and visions, and lead us, Father, and give us the breakthroughs that we need in the name of Jesus. By the power of your name, by the power of your word, by the power of your spirit, we ask you, Abba, that you do this for us. Holy Spirit of God, speak to us. 
whisper in our ears. We want to hear the voice of the Lord in our lives. And we want to grow trained to listen to him and teach others to listen to him. We want a joy in listening to him. And we want to teach others this joy as well, Holy Spirit. We thank you and praise you. We give you glory and honor. Thank you for this day. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Julius. Uh, thank you, brothers and sisters. We all see you. Thank you. Thank you, brother Julius. Thank you, brother Joe.